Okay, ground speed mini, right? This is like, what, what is ground speed mini? I get so many questions about this, Joe. How does it work? Why do we have it, et cetera? Look, let me tell you what ground speed mini is in, in, in a, like a nutshell answer. It's basically a logic that's installed to provide for a constant energy state on the approach. And really what all that means is a constant ground speed. How does the airplane do that? Okay, the first thing you need to understand is what VAP is, okay? VAP in this aircraft equals v VLS, plus one third of the wind component that you enter on the perf approach page. Let me give you an example of this, okay? Let's say we're landing on runway uh, one zero left and the wind happens to be one zero zero at 21 knots. What is a third of 21? Seven, right? So one third of the wind, seven knots. And let's say your VLS happens to be one thirty two, okay? So VLS equals 132. We add the seven knots, which is a third of the VLS, the third of the wind component, right? Entered on the perf approach. And so what we end up with is 139. Your VAP is 139. So VAP is either, here's the second part to this, VLS plus a third of the wind or VLS plus five. It could be VLS, this number, plus five. Now, when would it be when would it be VLS plus five? If one third of the wind happened to be less than five. Let me give you an example. Let's say this over here was one zero zero at 12. What's one third of 12? Four. So now 132 plus four would be 136, but it can never be VLS. It can never be less than five, right? So VLS plus five in this case would be what our VAP happens to be. Now, now that you understand VAP, what we need to do now is determine what our ground speed mini baseline is. Okay, this is the next thing you gotta know, right? So ground speed mini baseline equals, ground speed mini baseline is going to equal V app minus the winds entered on the perf approach page. Okay, remember on your perf, this is in the McDo, right? In the perf approach page, this is where you input the winds. So now, let's say we're landing on 10 left, this is winds are 100 at 12, it's 100% a, it's a headwind, you with me? If I take 12 knots away from my VAP number, which we said is 139, so VAP is 139, subtract 12 from this, and what do you end up with? 127, you agree? This is your ground speed mini baseline. This is the ground speed, the constant ground speed that the airplane needs to maintain on the approach, okay? So follow me so far. Let me just back up just a second, okay? First thing we did was we determined what is VAP and how does the aircraft determine that? It takes VLS, computed by FMGC, plus one third of the wind, or plus five, right? The greater of the two. And now what we're gonna do is take our VAP, because that was our VAP calculation, subtract the wind component entered on the perf approach page, and we get our ground speed mini baseline. Ground speed mini baseline here happens to be 127 knots. So on your navigation display in the top left corner, you have an ADIR's ground speed indication. That's provided from your air data inertial reference system. For more information on that, visit onesteppprep.com oral prep segments, we talk all about that stuff there. Now look, 127 will be seen on the top left corner of the navigation display, yeah? So check this out. Here's my, uh, let me put it over here. Okay, PFD on the left side, attitude indicator, right? And over here, I got ground speed, which should be 127. Now, the other thing that you got over here is an eight years wind vector. It actually should say one zero zero at 12. Okay, and it'll vary obviously with altitude. Okay, of course you've seen these things before. So now you're like, what is the V, how does the airplane maintain a constant ground speed? This is where everybody gets lost. So if you're, if you're lost right now watching this video, go back to the beginning because this is about to throw you for a loop, okay? So restart it if you're, if you're not with me yet. If you're, if you're here with me still, okay, here's, here's where it gets interesting. Your V target, your V target is the actual indicated airspeed that the aircraft will fly. This is what I'm gonna see over here. 
Now, this number is variable, dependent upon what our ambient wind is doing around us, right? So let's say, for simplicity's sake, that it is 100 at 12 knots right now, okay? 127 is the ground speed mini baseline. We want to keep 127. Your V target, what we're actually going to fly, is ground speed mini baseline. Here's the equation. If you're taking notes, write this down. Ground speed mini baseline plus A deer's wind equals V target. You see that? Simple, all right? That's it right there. That's your V target calculation right there. So what does that mean? 127 and 12, what is it? Well, 139 happens to be spot on here, right? 139 is your V target. Now let's say, for example, that this wind changes. Let's say we're higher up on the approach. We're over here at 3,000 feet. This is surface wind, right? Let's say this is surface wind for just a second. We're on the approach and the wind happens to be uh, 100 at 30. Okay, blowing, but at least it's a headwind. So now you add these two up, and what do you get? 157. I would expect to see my V target here at 157. So now this is where flight crews get confused because they're like, my V app number is not 157. Why aren't we flying 157? Well, the reason is that your aircraft will fly V target in order to maintain a constant ground speed mini baseline. It will want to maintain 127 knots, and to do that, it's gonna take the variable wind, eight years generated, right? And it's gonna add them up, 157, 157's here. What's gonna change this number? The wind, folks, right? So if all of a sudden this drops to 20, now this goes down to 147. I think you get the pattern, right? As this number begins to drop or increase or whatever it does, your V target will vary. And ultimately, however, the airplane will end up later on landing at the V app number. But this is the way ground speed mini works. And it confuses a lot of pilots because of various reasons. One, without the proper instruction, it could be confusing. I could see that, right? And a lot of, and a lot of pilots and instructors alike just really don't understand the way the pixie dust works, right? So hopefully this gives you a little bit better understanding of it.